I'm Gary Hirschberg, an alum and humble yogurt maker. Um, I'm, uh, I'm here uh, to honor this incredible achievement, which I consider to be the start of an era for our college, and I'll come back to that point. It's obvious that a building like this and the thinking it embodies is, is amazing, but also overdue. Uh, I was saying last night I was studying climate change now almost a half a century ago, Jonathan, when we were here as students, and, uh, and yet we finally now are starting to see expressions of what the climate opportunity really is, which is to me an opportunity for win, 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 win economics. The notion that economics and, and, and commerce doesn't have to be at the expense of others, doesn't have to be at the expense of other species, doesn't have to be at the expense of our planet, but can be that the rising tide can lift all boats. We now know that according to the UN that 50, there will be 50 million environmental refugees by 2020 on this planet, and that number is only going up. So the time for this kind of thinking is certainly overdue, but it's absolutely here. But I want to say that I see this as much more than a structure or a place or a building. Uh, for me, it represents the most essential ingredient to make sustainability even possible, which is thinking differently. And of course, where else but Hampshire would this be an appropriate thing to be talking about? This building and this thinking challenges the myth of waste. You know, we're the only species on Earth that somehow is in the practice of leaving stuff behind that is toxic or destructive to others. Um, it leaves behind or addresses the myth, challenges the myth of a way, that mythological place where we send all of our waste. And I'm still trying to figure out where that is. Uh, if you find it, let me know someday, but it doesn't seem to exist. It challenges the myth that green means sacrifice. Um, we now know that reducing footprints, carbon footprints, water footprints, toxin footprints, biodiversity footprints, um, the poverty put, footprint that is inextricably linked when 10% of the, the world is using more than half of our resources and the most vulnerable are, are truly paying the price, uh, that, that reducing these footprints actually does rise, raise all boats. Um, it models, as I say, win, 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 win thinking, which is absolutely, this is not, climate is not an opportunity to think about deficits, about what's missing. It's an opportunity to think about what we can have if we understand that we are the subsidiary of our earth, that not, not the opposite as we've, as we've thought. The second thing that it makes me realize is that this is a, a living, breathing, not only building, but living, breathing, educational institution, opportunity. The involvement, for me, despite all of the incredible elements, and there are incredible elements, and I hope you'll all take them in, uh, in this building. The most exciting thing I've seen in my last 24 hours is the in inextricable involvement of students in every step of this process, from design, through building, through modeling, through improving, this building, the process of the building, is in itself what is, for me, what's greatest. Because what is now needed in the world is not more talk about sustainability, but training and tools. We, 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 have, we have the knowledge of the problem. <laughs> it is clear. And we have the motivation. I have three millennials, uh, three millennial children of my own. This is where they've chosen to to put their efforts, uh, put their lives. And you see it all around here, uh, whether it's environmental justice or ecology or ecosystem protection or whatever. Uh, but what, what we now need is we need to have student involvement in every step of this. We need uh, the, to train and inspire and equip the next generation to go forward and and make this real, make this a real part of our economics. Sustainability is obviously not a topic. It's a, a fully integrated way of thinking. Again, absolutely consonant with everything about Hampshire, everything that we, that we who've been here uh, know and love. And that leads me to the last point, which is I really think that this is at this moment in history, in time, but also at this moment in the history of this college, um, this is an extraordinary opportunity, not just for our inside community, but for Ham Hampshire in the world to make a statement, to translate the, the experiment 
uh, here in challenging conventional thinking, to challenge the experiment of siloed thinking, uh, to challenge uh, siloed thinking, uh, and to bring forward uh, not only students, uh, but thinking and modeling of the way that we're going to have to think differently to raise all, to, as I say, to raise all boats. To my mind, the experiment is over. In Jonathan's and my day, that's what it was talked about, you know, and that's, I suppose, because we never knew if the school was going to even be here the next year when we came back. That, the experiment's open, over. We now know. We see it in our alums. We now see it in this expression. Um, and as this, I hope, carries over to the rest of the campus, to the agriculture that's here, to the rest of our site, to the rest of these 60s and 70s buildings that are dire, in dire need of entering the 21st century. Um, this is our moment. This is our opportunity. We here who have the luxury of choice in a world where many do not have choice, uh, we have now a responsibility. Uh, to me, and I know my friend Bill will talk about this shortly, uh, we are now having to transfer from the era of focusing on climate mitigation to climate adaptation. And it is dire that we do both, of course. Uh, we have a responsibility, we who have choice, we who have knowledge, we who have the experience here. And now we who are getting the tools have a responsibility to bring those out there. We have, we have an understanding that none of us wins unless all of us win. And I'm talking about other species as well. So the world needs us to share this vision. The world needs us to share this incredible learning and this incredible experience here, which leads me to the last thing I will say about this structure and this day, and that is that this is to me all about hope. Uh, I don't believe that we have a shortage of, of um, anything out there uh, as long as we have hope. And to me, this is one of the most hopeful moments in the college's history, in our community's history, but also in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a world that is in dire need of us to bring our hope out and provide real solutions at a time more needed than ever. Thank you.